Welcome to my minimalist bedroom tour. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you what's under my bed, inside my drawers, in my closet, as well as some of the stories about the items that I value most inside this room. So come on. So starting off with the layout of the room, this bedroom is 12 by 15 and I'm so thankful for it. It's definitely very spacious and it's the biggest room that I have had uh, really in my entire life. I used to live in a 900 square foot trailer with my family of six. <laughs> so yeah, I'm from a family of six. So this, this to me is very, very spacious and I'm definitely thankful for this space. In the past, I had my electric piano from Donner over here. My daughter and I like to play the piano and I have now moved it to my living room. Now that my three-year-old will not touch with it, he doesn't really mess with it anymore. So now it's safe to actually move to the living room and it also gives us some walking space. So now we can actually like walk without banging our legs. So I'm definitely thankful for that. So let's start off in this corner over here. This is actually a painting that my husband made of our first date. This is the sunset on our first date. So it's really a beautiful photo to have here. And actually that's that red there is pretty much the only pop of color that we have there, but it also incorporates some of the greens and really just the colors of the room. So no doubt the biggest feature in this room is definitely the bed. At one point we had a four poster massive king size bed and my husband and I sold that and actually made money off of it in order to build this one. We spent like 300 bucks on making this bed ourselves and within the money that we sold the other one and then the money we spent on this we actually made money off of it. And I'm definitely a lot happier with this because it's something we made. This blue epoxy resin is one of my favorite parts about this bed. It's so smooth and shiny, and it just adds a pop of color that's also just relaxing. But this bed actually definitely incorporates the concept of wabi-sabi, which is basically the Japanese art of taking things that are imperfect and really displaying those in a beautiful way and admiring the things for their imperfections. So one of the examples that I can share for this bed is really this poly finish down here that we kind of goofed on and we could have like sanded this we could have fixed that and we just ended up leaving it because it kind of tells the story this was our first time doing something like this we did it as a family like we went together to pick out the wood and we worked on it together as a family and it's really a beautiful memory another part that we goofed on is what i call our little caterpillar we made a mistake on where we were going to drill holes and instead of just like uh, trying to hide that or fill it or something. We just kind of made it part of the bed's detailing. We just added some epoxy. I think that sometimes the imperfections and the items that we have can really tell a story and actually be kind of beautiful if you think about it. One of the things that I added to this bed that I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see because of the lighting is that I added some fairy lights with a timer. And really when it lights up at night, it shines through this epoxy resin. And so it kind of looks like little fireflies just kind of floating around through the blue and it's super super cozy and also for anything that i can i will leave a link down below in the description box just in case you want to check anything out for my sheet set i actually use organic cotton for me it was very important to have something that i actually sleep on to be organic just be natural material that's also breathable and durable this bedding is from Pottery Barn and I absolutely love it because since it's white, it kind of doesn't take away from what I wanted to be the Megan focal point, which was the bed and really just the natural things like the wood and my plants. But because of this fine detailing, it's also something that just kind of adds some character and some depth. This green quilt is something that is very special to me. It's not super expensive. I actually looked up where you could find it and it's actually from Kohl's. So it's not something that's like monetarily <laughs> valuable, but to me it is valuable. And that's because it reminds me of my hospice days and why I really want to live the way that I do and what hospice taught me. And it's funny enough that this quilt arrived to me within like a week of me actually quitting my hospice job. And the story behind this quilt goes is that I had a patient that used to be my neighbor. He was an elderly man that had been fighting with cancer. He and his wife had been married for really all their adult life and they lived alone in their home. So once he did pass away, his wife was left living alone in their home and she only lived for like three more weeks after that, died of natural causes. They both passed away within a month of each other and she wasn't even ill that we knew of. And whenever this happened, their family had put their home on an estate sale. All of their things were up for grabs, photos, bedding, anything. And this, this blanket was like $5 at their estate sale. My mom actually gave it to me. And some people would find that like very depressing or kind of morbid. Why would I keep a quilt that belonged to somebody that passed? And to me, it's because of the 
reminder that it gives to me that some of the things that I might value, some of the things that I might hoard, or, well, I use that word like hoarding, like uh, that's not something that we should just kind of throw out there because it's, it's a diagnosis. Like it's not everybody is a hoarder and just because you keep things doesn't mean you're a hoarder. And I don't want to downplay hoarding, but at the same time, like I might keep some things and have my really deep rooted attachments to things, but I'm going to pass just the same way that they did. And I don't know when that's going to be. It may be when I'm older or like older and it may be tomorrow. And I don't know that. And so it kind of, reminds me of the value of life and savoring my life and appreciating the things that I have but also not like holding on to them so tightly that those are the things that matter the most to me because at the end of the day that family even their photos were on sale at that estate sale and I, I said that in a previous video like when you want to use your nice things like god forbid you die and somebody just puts your things on an estate sale and you never use those things that you really valued those things that were special to you those things that you loved like that's not the way that I want to live my life anymore and I used to do that I used to keep the nice things stashed away in my closet under oh, like under my bed and I would never actually use them because they were too nice too pretty and I would ruin them and that's not the way that I want to live my life I want to use the things that I value the most the things that bring me the most joy and that way I can savor my life because it's short it may not seem that way but it is so to me this quilt is very special very beautiful and it's also a way that I can honor their life and just kind of remember them and and keep that legacy so yeah, this, this, this is special to me. It's something beautiful that I will definitely keep on this bed. All right, but onto some not so sentimental things. Let's talk about these nightstands. My husband and I have matching nightstands. You can actually buy them off of Home Depot. I got mine off of Amazon just because they deliver and it's free, free delivery. So this, these are my drawers. I won't actually show you like what's all inside my drawers unless we wanna do like a full wardrobe tour. I can definitely do that, but this is basically my drawers. On top of the nightstand, we have this beautiful fiddle leaf fig tree that I'm surprised I haven't been killing it. It used to be very small and it still has, it has some little babies. So I'm very glad. This lamp was actually a set of two that I got off of Amazon. I think it was like 50 bucks, but they're touch. So basically I can just tap them and turn them on, turn them off and they kind of dim as well. So I love that it has that usage. And it also has little charging ports on the side. So that way, if you use your phone as your alarm, you could actually use it that way. But I honestly wouldn't recommend that if you have like a phone usage problem, uh, maybe you might want to put your phone like away from you, like put it actually on the win windowsill. That way you actually have to get up out of bed to use your phone. But if you don't find yourself in that situation, it could be really helpful to have like a charging port right beside you. And because I value reading my Bible, but I didn't always used to have the habit, I always keep it right beside me. So that way I can read it in the morning or at night. But all right, I promised you I would show you under my bed. And so down here, I actually have some bins. I have some baby clothes and maternity clothes. And then I also have this bin that has like our Christmas stuff. So this has our nativity and some lights and just some other odd ends. And because we don't have a garage or a basement, I really have no other place to put them besides under our bed because I mean, you don't wanna keep things that are wooden or like clothes, for example, in an attic, that would not be very good. So I kind of have no choice but to keep all of these things under the bed. But honestly, like if you're gonna put things under your bed, I would definitely recommend getting some sort of a bin, some sort of a storage system so that it's not like all rolling around and it's kind of organized and that way, if you need anything, you can quickly access it. And you also know what's under your bed so you don't just have like a big mess. Oh, and I almost forgot this poor little guy. This is Snakey, my little snake plant. He just lives in the corner of the room. And over on this side is my husband's nightstand and his Bible. And pretty much other than the things that we already showed you on top of the nightstands, we like to keep them clear. This little washable rug is definitely not my favorite. We've had it for many years, even before we lived in this home. I would love to have one that would like wrap all the way around the bed. I think that would be very beautiful, very cozy and just tie the space together. But honestly, it's not in the budget and it's just not a priority for me to spend on that right now. But honestly, like many other examples that I could give to you, when I practice delayed gratification, and not like guilting myself over wanting something, like just acknowledging the fact that I want something, but at the same time, letting myself know that I'm gonna wait for it and I don't need to have it now and I don't need to like push anything or force anything to happen. I end up almost always having the thing that I want a lot cheaper. So it's not something that I'm gonna be spending my money on, at least not for the moment being. And lastly, let me share with you my closet. I'm actually really proud of what I have done to this closet. So this is actually a walk-in closet. I think it's like three feet by six feet, something like that. And this is something that I actually took it upon myself here recently to kind of rearrange all the things because we used to have all of our clothes lined up at the very top. And then we'd have my husband's work clothes down at the bottom. And so it was like, 
this whole space was taken up with clothes. And now what I've done is just kind of move them down so that they're all on this side. So when, when you're like lying down here in the bed, this is what you see. And this was actually one of the paintings that my husband had kind of started on and he wanted to throw this away. It was just one of those things where he just kind of lost the inspiration and he didn't really feel proud of it. He wasn't happy about it. And I liked it. I liked the colors. I'm like, you know what? I don't even care if it's not finished. Like I, I like it. So I'm gonna display it here in the closet. If you don't wanna look at, at it like inside the home, then we'll just display it in the closet. And so basically whenever you kind of step in here, we have some wooden baskets where he keeps his hats. He's a big fan of hats. We have his workout gear because he likes to do some back exercises. He has back issues, so it's a definite every single day thing. And then honestly, I just put this like random wooden hanger because I thought it looked cute with the, the browns, just kind of tie them in. And this little box is really cute. It's one that my husband actually made for me. It's a jewelry box. Whoops. <laughs> it doesn't have like anything to just stick, kind of keep it together. But this is one that he made for me when we were dating. So it's a really beautiful piece just to kind of keep on display. Over in this little corner, I usually keep my work light and my tripod, which is not currently here because I'm using it right now as we're filming. And then we keep my husband's exercise ball. So I mentioned he has back issues, so we kind of have to keep this to use every single day. Over on this end, we have all of our shoes. And then I have my workout gear and this little pillow. This is one that I use more so than my husband because I also kind of get back pain. This one was recommended to me by my chiropractor because when you're like constantly looking forward at screens, like your neck is bending this way. So the weight of your head, this big giant ball is curving your neck this way. So what I do is I kind of lie on it and my head kind of curves this way and I just lie on it for a few minutes. And honestly, like the first day I did this, I was a little bit sore. So I definitely have found this to be helpful, just kind of lying on this, especially if you like work on computers all the time, like being aware of your posture, being aware of your back. Like we don't realize how important actually taking care of your body is. It doesn't mean that we do like these extensive workouts, but just, you know, a little bit every single day goes a long way. So he definitely keeps his little armbands over here. And it's basically like really small. I don't have any more machines for working out anymore. We use these workout bands. I have some little like circular bands as well. And then because we have that railing up there, we just kind of tie them. We can do back exercises, leg exercises, lots of different exercises. You could tie them to a door. So let's see. I could basically put this behind the door. You could do exercises this way. You could put the bands and, and pull on both ends and that way you kind of have a little gym inside your house without actually needing to like have a whole bunch of equipment and store a whole bunch of things. So for me, these types of exercises definitely work a lot better. And well, they don't take up a lot of room. And they look cute too. I like the colors. And for the last part of this video, I'd actually like for your help on deciding between something. So in my video, my love story, I share with you that both my husband and I have undergone sexual abuse. And when I posted that video, I was really nervous. I didn't know if I should post that and talk about that. I didn't know how it would be perceived and I did not. The last thing that I wanted was for somebody to be hurt by that. I wanted it to be an encouraging thing and just to give people hope that there is healing and that you can have a beautiful, loving relationship even after undergoing through something like that. And so after I posted that video, my husband and I went to a retreat. Actually, it wasn't a retreat. It was like a five week course on healing childhood wounds. And by then I already thought like I've been healed, like I've forgiven, but it was so, so beautiful to undergo through that together and have that experience because there's a lot of other things about childhood and things that we really hadn't recognized we still needed to kind of work through and work on. I started feeling like I wanted a cross in our room. And I told my husband, like we always pray together at night before we go to bed. And I just really wanted a cross to look at and contemplate while we were praying. But I told him that I felt like it was a weird thing, like it was a bad thing, like a dirty thing, because it would feel like Jesus is watching us when we're being intimate. When I actually expressed that out loud and thought about it and prayed about it, I thought, no, like all the more reason why I would want to place a cross in my room, because I, I felt like what man or like humankind had made impure and ruined inside of our relationship for the first few years. Like it didn't, I wouldn't say it like ruined our relationship, but it definitely affected our marriage for the first few years. We really definitely had to work through that and finding the ability to feel passion and feel openness to each other without feeling dirty, without feeling icky. It, we had to work on that. We definitely had to work on that. And it felt like it was something we couldn't talk to people about. We didn't talk to people about that. And one of the exercises that we did in this five week healing course, healing childhood wounds, healing childhood trauma, what we were told to do is to bathe ourselves with this 
new soap. This uh, soap that would be like very good smelling, no, no like negative thoughts or like dirty thoughts, but like bathe ourselves and say, I am clean, God cleans me, I am clean. God cleans me over and over and over again. And oh my gosh, like this, this was such a powerful exercise because it wasn't just recognizing that I had already forgiven, which I, I felt like I already had forgiven and also forgiven myself, but just acknowledging that I had also made mistakes within my childhood that led up to a lot of disappointments, a lot of hurt, and that I was forgiving the people that hurt me, but also forgiving myself and just letting all of that go and deciding that I was going to be new. It was so beautiful. And the soap that I decided to use was frankincense and myrrh. So I'm obsessed with this new soap. I'll show it to you on the, the screen. It, it's one that you can like buy at Publix. But all that being said, after I had told my husband that I just kind of felt like this desire to have a cross <laughs> randomly, um, these guys that come over from Jerusalem once a year were selling crosses. And so I bought these two and they're made, handmade from Jerusalem, and they have frankincense inside them. So to me, that was just like, ah, oh, I need Jesus. And I need, I need that reminder that those things that I felt like were dirty and impure are clean, are beautiful. And this is so something totally like, maybe you didn't expect this to be part of a bedroom tour, but I felt like I couldn't talk about these things with other people before. And it wasn't something that I should have been like ashamed about. It was something that I should have been able to open up to people about. And I know that a lot of people have undergone sexual abuse and have had traumas. And so I didn't want to shy away from not talking about that. This channel, I want to talk about the aesthetics and the beauty and the decluttering and keeping a space cozy, but I also want to talk about those deeper issues. And I'm no psychologist, so like don't take this as mental health advice, but I just want to share with you like my passion for living and just kind of transmit that to you. My, my entire mission is to help you savor life because I worked within hospice and I have experienced hundreds and hundreds of people dying. I mean, my job was working with people that were dying on a daily basis. And a lot of other things that I've gone through in my life, like I want to talk about those things with a side of hope and encouragement that like no matter what stage of life you are in, that you can be in control of what happens going forward. So anyway, all of that being said, I am not sure of which one to post or put inside my room. So let me know your pick. Which one should I go with? This larger one that is actually like hand carved Jesus and it's kind of squared at the ends or this one, which is quite beautiful, very, very detailed, but it's metal. It's not like handmade, this this one is. I mean, the cross is, but not, not the actual figure of Jesus here on the cross. I'm not sure, I love them both. I love them both. That's it for this video. I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know what, what, you, what you think I should go with. What, what should I place there? Because uh, what man has made impure, God makes pure. So thank you so much for watching this video. I thank you so much for sticking to the end. This has been a little bit of a longer video and probably a little bit different than a usual bedroom tour that's just like upbeat and doesn't really talk about that other stuff, but that's not gonna be me. I wanna talk about all the deeper issues. I don't wanna just get to the fluff. If you like this video, you'll be sure to like my two videos, 10 minimalist tips for a cozy home on a budget and 15 ways to reduce visual clutter. Also, if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up because it really helps support my channel. I thank you for sticking to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.